You know what, Earl? What's up? I love this time of year. Me too, Charvay. I love being with family and friends. It brings laughter and joy and merriment. And our hope for you is to bring new seasons throughout the year. This is the season to be free to laugh and to dance. It's holiday season without a wind in the air. To make your spirits free Free to love and free to forget everything Things that have hurt you throughout the year This is the time to spread love and joy and to repair Oh, this is the season To be free to rise in today This is the season, season for visions to take place, to create a new avenue, create new state, visions of passions, passions and actions taking place. To a new level of season and grace. This is the season to be free to rise in today. Oh, 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 to spread the joy and cheer, to celebrate you and me, and what's coming in the new year. This is our season to live out all our dreams, dreams that we hope for, and dreams that will be. Worldwide Podcast. You listen to Puzzle Power 21, Christian Media on Late Night Radio. Hi, I'm Larry W. Robinson, host of Gospel Updates, your gospel entertainment news report. And you're listening to Positive Power 21, Christian Radio, with Jerry Weiss, live worldwide. Can you feel the power? Can you feel the power? Feel the power of Devil X. Positive Power 21.org Internet Radio You are listening to Jerry Royce Live Worldwide Podcast. All right, what's going on, family? Good morning, good morning, everybody, and welcome to Positive Power Double XI special, special show, and it's called Next Man Up. Welcome. We appreciate you guys tuning in. Please share this file. We got a very powerful lineup. This is a debut show for Next Man Up. That's right. This is a live podcast, live podcast. So, ladies, you're listening. Share this with your husbands, your brothers, your, your Teens, your tweens, teachers, preachers. That's right. Get them all on board. Get them out here. That's right. We're going to be talking about some serious subjects. That's right. Tonight, we're going to be talking about 
when a teen hangs with the wrong crowd. And what, is, and what are some of the consequences of that? All right, we all got stories to tell. And this is just remind you, some of your parents, why it's so important that you find out who are your children's friends. I don't care if they're in high school, elementary school, or college. You need to know who are their friends. All right, because I actually had that experience this, this summer myself. All right. All right, everybody, let's get this show rolling. It's going to be moderated by our good friend and, and uh, pastor and doctor, Mr. Paul Kelly. All right, let's bring him on the call. We got all the guests standing by. What's going on, Dr. Kelly? Hey! What's up, my brother? Welcome, welcome. Praise the Lord, Dr. Jerry Royce. How you doing, sir? Glad to have you. Glad to be here today, sir. God bless you. Thank yeah. you for welcoming us and uh, allowing us to be a part of this powerful summit, sir. Amen. Amen. Thank you, sir. I uh, appreciate you jumping right on board. Uh, you saw the vision. And um, so uh, we ready to get started. You, you ready? Open this up with praise. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. Dr. Jerry, with your permission, you don't mind if uh, we lift the panel up this summit. We, you don't mind if we just lift this up in prayer. Yes, sir. Amen. And under your vision, sir, we get right to it, sir. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Father God, we come in the mighty name of Jesus. Oh God, Father, we come. Oh God, we ask you to continue to bless this mighty man of God, Jerry Royce. Oh God, uh, a man with a vision. Oh God, we thank you for encircling him and bringing those around him who have the vision also to implement, implement it in your name. Oh God, we ask you to bless this powerful summit on today. The members, the guests, the artists, their family members, we ask you to bless them, oh God. Brother Kent Osborne, oh God, we ask you to bless Deacon Didi and bless the man of God, Curtis Bryan. So God, without further ado, Lord, we give you all the honor and the praises. Bless every listener, bless every child, every youth on today who may be listening as well. It is in Jesus' name we pray, amen, amen. and amen. Hallelujah. Amen. amen. We thank our listening, listening audience for tuning in today on this special segment. I'm your moderator, Dr. Paul Kelly. Once again, we thank Dr. Jerry Royce, amen, for this powerful vision. We have with us today, we're going to jump right into this, amen, the gifted Christian rapper, amen, CEO, Minister Kent Osborne. He will share with us just a few minutes before we get to our next uh, panelist, amen, and we're going to get right into this. Brother Kent Osborne, are you there, sir? Yes, I am here. How are you doing? Hallelujah. Praise the Lord, my brother. Thank you for being a part of this summit. I had a pleasure, amen, of speaking with this young man, the future Arthur, Amen. Sir, before we get to our next panelist, amen, I know you can die. I just wait, brother. I hear <laughs> Amen. Give us a little bit of amen. Your, your spirit, sir, and we'll get right to our summit, sir. Hey, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm Ken Osborne, man. I'm here, you know, representing Prison to Power, which is, which is actually the, uh, a nonprofit that I, that I started. Um, which is basically what, what my, my whole ministry is to, you know, to be able to, if I can free people out of, out of their, out of their mental prisons, I can allow them to have power over their lives. So that, that, that's kind of what my ministry is built, built around, you know, even with the nonprofit and with my music, I am a recording artist. You know, I've, I've completed several CDs. Um, I have music on, on YouTube, on iTunes. I'm also, a uh, own a trucking company, I own my own trucking company, which is KO Trucking. You know that I've been doing for uh, for a couple of years now, so I have that going. Also, I'm getting into doing a little motivational speaking and getting ready to start a show coming up called the Prison to Power Hour. So you'll be seeing that, you know, on YouTube, and we'll be sharing the link. Uh, we actually did, did a did a dry run yesterday, or right? actually last night. I mean, the guy that's that's editing everything, we did a dry run of it yes just last night, and I mean, man, it was awesome. I'm really excited about it. So. That's who Ken I call all the is. I'm a man of, man of God that was saved by, God, saved by the grace of God. Hallelujah. Well, later on in the show, amen, uh, Dr. Jerry Royce is going to give you all the uh, opportunity, amen, to share with our listening audience where can we find your product, man. So just stand by. We got a powerful show, amen. Our next man up, praise God, the gifted gospel artist, mentor, Deacon Dada. Congratulations on his debut album. 
spiritual ammo. Welcome to this powerful summit, my brother. Deacon Dada, are you there, sir? Yes, I am here, sir. Yes, thank you. God bless everybody out there under the sound of my voice. I pray for all. I am Deacon Dundada um, with the album Spiritual Ammo coming off of the Love and Not Hate Movement and Tour, which is a program and uh, inspired by, you know, the death of my son and my nephew, uh, you know, hanging with the wrong crowd as this powerful um, program is going to present. And it's imperative that we get to our youth to understand and let them know, you know, to be careful about your surroundings, especially in this time, in this season. You know, we have to monitor our children and, and give them the food for thought that they would need to prosper in this society, in this world. You know, that's that's where the spiritual ammo comes in at the name of my album. That's the ammunition to make godly decisions in order to navigate through the traps of society growing up in poverty in the community. You know, so I'm pushing the message forward. I'm Deacon Dundada. I'm happy to be here. Happy you guys invited me and just to share with the people and share to the youth because we're all in the community, you know, with my youth programs, after school programs that me and my um my wife is heading up and um, I'm also a head coach in uh, community so I'm all in the community with the youth so it's like an oxymoron for what happened to my son and my nephew um, because we're saving lives in, in, in the community every day you know so this is what I'm here for this is the, the, the ministry that God has placed in my life I'm also from the streets myself back and forth to jail any part of the streets I've been in I've done and glory to God my life was saved and reserved and I studied the word and he gave me a newfound uh, uh, insight on the mentality that I was once in to the light that he has me in now and I'm sharing it across the country with my music and the love and I hate movement. Thank you for having me. Praise Amen. God. Praise God. Amen. Men of God. Praise God. That's that's powerful. Amen. Jerry, Jerry, my brother, you you, you got some firehouses, man. Brother, we we gonna have to call the fire department to, to put out some of this fire, <laughs> brother. Amen. Man, this, <laughs> is good. Amen. Yeah. This man up, man. Without further ado, amen, before we get to our visionary, Dr. Jerry Royce, the next man up, amen, is Curtis Brian Martin, amen, he's a powerful promoter, amen, a spiritual leader, praise God, without further ado, welcome up, our next man up, Curtis Brian, amen, welcome to the show, uh, Brother Brian. Hey, the, actually, the name is uh, Curtis Barry Martin, uh, but that's all good. It's all good. Um, uh, a little bit more about me. Uh, can you hear me clearly? Yes, sir. Uh, You're on. We got that Curtis, Curtis okay. Barry Martin. Very good. Well, uh, about me, uh, I'm a former youth pastor. Um, my my. The ages of my children were seven to fourteen. Uh, youth pastor for uh, for eight years, and currently now I teach seventh and eighth graders uh, at my church. Uh, I'm a minister, long time minister, been in the ministry ooh, uh, almost thirty years or so. Um, I the name of my company is the Orchard Promotional Firm, and I promote uh, gospel artists who have a message. Uh, you know, there are a number of artists that are out there, uh, but some of them forget the message, and they're all in it for the wrong reasons. They, they're in it for notoriety and fame. Uh, but I'm very privileged to work with the artist One Deacon Don Dada. Uh, he, he, he has more than a message. It's also a movement, love not hate. And, and he is sincere. He is very sincere in what God has called him out to do, set him apart to do. And, and, and literally, we are going across the land doing good, spreading the word of God, uh, encouraging people. Deacon has done over almost 100 interviews or, or more. Uh, yesterday, he was on musical soul food and uh, on over 200 stations and he was encouraging people strengthening people edifying the body and bringing also warning what to do and what not to do so what a privilege honor it is uh, at this stage in my career to work with an artist with integrity and an artist who has a heart for god and a word from god Amen. Amen. Oh, praise Amen. God. Thank you, my brother. I can feel the passion in your spirit, too, sir. Amen. Thank, Thank you, you for 
being a part of this summit. My brothers, I ask y'all to just be yourself. Let God move y'all. Let God move your spirit. Someone is out there, a man needs to hear from a godly man. Some youth, some young brother, some, some young lost soul needs to hear from our spirits on today. Without further ado, amen, our next man up. Praise God, are you ready, listening audience? Amen. He's the CEO and founder of Positive Power. Amen. Double XI Org, Christian Media and Family. He's a family man, a mentor, motivator. Oh, my God. And he's my personal friend. He grew up in Baltimore with both parents, one brother and a sister. Ladies and gentlemen, listening to audience around the world, without further ado, the visionary for this powerful p- platform, amen, Dr. Jerry Royce. Amen. My brother, you the next man up, <laughs> Dr. Jerry Royce. All right. Thank you, Dr. <laughs> Kelly and, and gentlemen. Thank you for joining yes, our sir. debut show of Next Man Up. Uh, definitely, this was uh, something that uh, God put on my heart to do. I mean, for a long time, I was thinking about this, that we need to have a real serious platform. And I apologize to uh, to Minister uh, Curtis, because I do joke around a lot. Batman is kind of crazy sometimes. Uh, a lot of you know that I've been um, suffering with, uh, with diabetes um, for the past two years, and I, I lost control of it. And at the same time, I lost, I was losing control of a whole lot. I was losing control of my life at the time. So now that I got it back under control, I look at it like, you know, God is, 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 is using me for, for something that we really don't always know sometime until you jump into the hot, the hot pot. And it is hot out there. And one of the things that's so dear to my heart is the young people. My brother and I, and, and Pastor mentioned my brother, my brother's name was Michael. We used to do, we used to own a publishing company with my dad for over 20 years it was a very serious business because it was a community magazine and my first thing my brother wanted to do he wanted to include the youth in the community so they was responsible for the comics and and some of the uh the some of the things that was going on on the educational and sports uh, uh, level in the magazine. So that was that was real dear to his heart. And, and, and even to this day, he goes into the high schools and meet with the young black boys who, who don't have any mentors or father or brother, anybody to show them the right way. And then we find it out in that region where he's living, some of the, the, the guys that are adult age don't have any mentors. But what's on TV? So that's why I thought it was so important for us to do this, because as I've been journeying, in this world called podcasting and and we have some good and some bad times you know looking for a good fit with the right podcasters and the right artists i've i found that that there are a lot of people who have powerful testimonies that's never been heard but on these airwaves and maybe in their church and their community but it's the stories are so especially when i heard deacon dada deacon don dada's story and I've heard some stories that was that was even more compelling than his. I said, what can I do? You know, what kind of platform can we build to to, to get these stories out there? And and, and, and when he said that the, the, what he's doing is, is like therapy, and I hear a lot of artists say that, a lot of authors say that when they went through something very traumatic in life, writing a book helps them, it's therapeutic. It helps them to cope with what they're going through or what they went through. I said, how many people are walking the same walk right now? This just a listening uh, uh, ear away. And, and, and this is a, and this podcast, I know a lot of you guys don't know, this is an international podcast. Our Spreaker Radio travels overseas through the military base. They pipe our live 24-hour 7 signal through their military to their Christian base uh, officers and soldiers. So that's why this podcast is so very important to to my family because of how we're reaching and who we're reaching. We're reaching people who may not even make it back to the mainland because we're in crazy times right now, just not in our streets, but all over this world right now when you're yes, talking sir. about domestic and international terrorism. So that's why we got to help people get their lives straight. And I know Kurt, uh, uh, Minister Curtis has been at, at it for a really long time to understand how important it is for people to come to God and understand the word. And Pastor Kelly, you know so importantly was the warfare that's going inside of our churches. So we're talking about building something. Well, no walls. There's no walls here. But there's somebody listening who's going to start opening up their book and start reading and start and, and start building a relationship with God. And maybe God will lead them to the right church. And a lot of us have been to churches and, 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 and ministries that had turned us the other way because it was just so political and just so disruptive that we didn't need that other stress in our life. So I, I applaud you gentlemen for joining us. And Kent, you know, I met Kent 
He he uh, he took on the call. He came to help me uh, put together a platform for independent artists that's, that's so important to me right now because we know that the independent artists are doing the best they can with what God has given them. But it's like, what else is out there for? And it's so important for media to come together for them. And I have a lot of skill sets. You, yeah. I'm not even going to sit here and name them all. People say, Jerry, Batman's lying. He can't do all of that. Yes, I can. <laughs> so um, Amen. further ado. And thank you so much for joining us. And I'm not sure how long we're going to go. We're going to let the spirit guide us. And, and that's why I chose Dr. Kelly, because Dr. Kelly is really good when it comes to time and, um, and, and things being potent. So, uh, Dr. Kelly, thank you so much for, for uh, doing this for me. Praise and, God. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Thank you, man of God. And once again, thank you for all those powerful men on this, on this powerful summit, Jerry. Amen. I uh, just want to remind each one of these spiritual leaders, amen, that not only, amen, God has set us aside and ordained us for this moment, mm-hmm. amen, but we are our brother's keepers, amen. So I applaud you, amen. To the listening audience, amen, who is joining us uh, on this powerful summit, amen, we we are part of this vision that Dr. Jerry, amen, that God has given to him, amen, to remind our youth, on today, we're going to get right into this, amen, this powerful segment, amen, just to remind parents, amen, out there should take the time to get to know who their teens hang out with, and I know each one of you agree to that, amen, who, who their friends are, that's the most important thing, who, who are the parents of these friends, uh, who are they socially connected with, uh, and it goes on and on, amen, and we, we, we as a pastor, Amen. We should be aware who our children are connected with. Amen. Especially if they're socially uh, isolated or socially disconnected for the most part, that may lead into depression. So we're going to get right into this, this powerful topic. And I, I am, I'm actually, I'm actually excited about this. Amen. Because as I was researching this powerful material that Dr. Jerry Royce has provided us with, it brings a lot of questions to mind, amen, uh, uh, many, many, many questions to mind. And I thank you for this powerful this powerful uh, platform because we're going to get right into it, amen. amen. Sometimes parents, parents really don't know what to do, amen, when they find out their teens or their youth are hanging with the wrong crew. Or sometimes we may jump to conclusions, and I'm quite sure, amen, many of you out there can't agree with that. Amen. So our next man up on this panel, amen, the next man up, I'm going to just pass it off to, amen. I want to go with Mr. Ken Osborne on this one. Kent, amen. Kent, how yes. in your, in your uh, I should say in your ministry, my brother, you have a powerful ministry, sir, and I commend you on that. Thank what you. are some of the behaviors that you may notice, sir, in a young man out there who's probably part or caught up into you know, a group, or not only just a group or a gang, a man that they're not too sure about these people. What are some of the behaviors or the indicators of that this youth or this young man or young lady for that you know for that purpose? What are some of their behaviors you know that we may see, sir? Take that away, sir, for a couple minutes and help our listening audience, sir. What are some of the behaviors that we may see? Okay, I look, some of the behaviors are, like, I have a little cousin that I was I was seeing him on Facebook, you know, and I, I grew up with him, man. His mom was, him and, you can hear me? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You hey, own, sir. I, okay, all right. Um, all right, yeah, I have, a, I have a little cousin, and, you know, I grew up with his mom. Like, we were like sisters, you know, growing up, sisters and brothers growing up. And um, mm-hmm. I see his pictures on Facebook. You know, I was showing somebody the other day, and I was seeing his pictures on Facebook. You know, and I had never mm. seen that before because I know him ever since he was a kid. But now that I'm seeing his pictures on Facebook, I see him on there with his pants down, you know, um, below his butt. Mm-hmm. You know, he got, he got money in his hand. He's throwing up game signs, and he got a blunt in his hand and all kind of stuff like that. So when I seen that, I automatically knew he was on the wrong track. You know, because I know how, when I grew up, I knew how I was. When I was doing things like that, it wasn't nothing positive came out of that. It came from hanging around the wrong people, you know, and it showed which way I was going. It showed what I did with my 24 hours a day and how I used my 24 hours a day 
was doing stuff like that. I was smoking weed, you know, walking around with my pants down, you know, trying to be bad, joining gangs and stuff like that. So that was one of the things when when you see that right there, that's how you know a child is. That's one of the ways you know the child is if he's going the wrong way. Yeah. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you for that. Um, for the listeners out there, you you may have seen uh, Brother Ken on Bobby Jones. Uh, Dr. Bobby Jones show, hey amen. Uh, he's a powerful Christian rapper, and you have a message for the youth. That's the reason why I asked you that question, sir. Hey amen. I watched that. I watched that um, that show that you were on, and I saw how the youth, hey amen, were engaged during that appearance. And Dr. Bobby Jones, he also even expressed that question to you. That's why, that's why I wanted to ask you that, sir. You got a message, <laughs> doctor. You got a message, oh, yeah. sir. So we thank you. We thank you for that, sir. We're going to get back around. We're going to get right back to you. Hey, man, before we get to go to our next man up, hey, man, Mr. Mr. Dada. Hey, man, I just want to remind, hey, man, our listeners, the Bible declares in Proverbs 22 and 6, declares parents to bring up the child in the way they should go. So when they're older, they will not depart from it, meaning... Amen. The teaching of God's words is very important. Praise God. Amen. Our next man up. Amen. Uh, Deacon, uh, Deacon Dada. Brother, are you with us, sir? I am with you, my Praise brother. God. This Thank is you. a powerful message uh, going on. I'm loving this. Yes. Yes, sir. Amen. <laughs> amen. Amen. Y'all let, y'all let God use y'all. That's the most important thing. What, are, what the, uh, let's piggyback off of Brother Kent. Amen. What are some, what are some of the behaviors, amen, that you have known and also, how, how, or I should say, how does God lead you into just talking to a young brother out there? Hey, man, come here, come here, young man. Let, let me talk to you. What are some of the, how, what is your gift? Give, just connect with our audience and out there and share with us how can you bring that youth, amen, into the arms or the safety of the Lord, amen, and, and to be a good mentor to him, sir? Oh, man, the most the most important thing you could do is just show them you you, you concern, you know, you Amen. care for them because That's you right. know a lot of them are you know looking for acceptance and looking for love, you know, and a, and a place that they could call their own, and it's hard for them to relate to you know the church goers or you know what have you. So what I do is I give them you know my experience my testimony, you know, Amen. so that they can understand that I was once too in their shoes. So once yes, you become yes. relatable to them, let them know, listen, my mind, you know, was uh, transfixed before I ran the streets, before I understand this and that and the third, and give them mm-hmm. some examples. You know, I was out there, you know, smoking weed and doing this when I was young, uh, selling drugs, um, brandishing guns, mm-hmm. and ready to utilize that if I had to, but to let them know the flip side of that, that, you know, um, my mindset you know, was was my, my, my best thinking got me trapped and locked up where I thought I was doing the end thing. So to let them understand wow. that they are in uh, a situation where as though you think you're doing the right thing because the society and your community and your peers are doing the same thing, but it's designed for you to do that because you have lack of opportunities. And it's so mm-hmm. easy for you to get that drug or get that gun because or get that weed and smoke that weed because it's like a trend that's going on, but then the end result is death and destruction and incarceration. So when I let them know that all the jail time that I did behind running behind this mentality and that they're mm-hmm. doing nothing new that they're going the same direction and path that I went, that they don't have to go to use me as an example. Yeah. So once you become relatable uh-huh. to the youth, then that'll open up doorways because they want to be accepted, they want to fit in, you know, and they're being misguided. So they need to be also guided out of that. Or if they see that somebody was in there and got out and had that direction to get out and they need to get out That's too right. before something happens detrimental to them. And I use my, my experience, and I also use my son and my nephew. Mm-hmm. You know, my son was an aspiring football player. Uh, he had a four-year scholarship to go to Norfolk State University, and he was a starting freshman as accomplishment wow. in himself mm-hmm. to be starting as a freshman. So it was predicted that he wouldn't have made it past three years and he would have, you know, pulled him from college and to the, you know, to the pros mm-hmm. because his yeah. stats would have been so crazy. So 
use that example because he was so influential that a lot of people knew him. So I charged this community, I charged his peers to be successful because of him. If you knew him, you loved him, and for those that's going to get to know him, and my nephew as well, it was inspiring to be, he had a promised future, but it was in the wrong place at the wrong time to be mindful of your surroundings and your peers because everybody that comes to your surrounding is not meant for your good. Everybody don't have the best intention for you. So you got to have that wisdom mm -hmm. and understanding to know when not to be in those situations. And it happens so fast to be careful out there, to be okay. vigilant because the devil right. is seeking whom he may devour and destroy. Amen. Right. So, Amen. Yeah, that's how I get to them, to relate to them from my experience. Let them know I've been through this. I went through jail. Right. I've been on the streets. I was once you. So don't do what I did. Now I'm successful. Now, you know, glory to God, my life is still intact. I got friends that's not here no more that went through the same thing I went through, but they can't tell their testimony because they're dead or they're doing life in jail. So the only thing that you're going to get out of following that trend, pants sagging, uh, smoking blunts, brandishing guns, and trying to be with the in crowd is jail or death. That's the end result. Those are the right. benefits of that mentality, and that's the, 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 the um, end result. So if they can see that picture and understand that's what you want for your life, then this the path you take. But if not, you need to focus, change it, and figure out a way to come up out of it right now before it's too late. And I use my life as an example. That's how I relate to the youth. Hey, man. Right, hey, man. Wow. Hey, man. Let the church say amen. Amen. Hey, man. Amen. Hey, man. <laughs> hey, man. I know your promoter is standing by the next man up. Hey, man. Dr. Martin. Hey, man. Uh, brother, you, you you all you all man, I gotta I gotta come to y'all, man. I gotta go find y'all, man. Y'all y'all just just making the preacher happy. Hey man, the next man the next man up man up is your promoter, hey man, Dr. Martin, hey man. What would you recommend, Dr. Martin, as far as meeting the parents? Meeting the parents of let's just say your son's new friend. What would you recommend to some parents out there? Connect with the parent, hey man, and Meeting the parents, how would you recommend meeting the parents of your friends? It, it, it's got to be a master plan to this thing, bro. Amen. If so, yeah. what are some of your ways you would re recommend meeting uh, the parents of some of these friends that you deal with? Sometimes our children ain't with, sir. Well, Next the man up. The, the, the most important thing is uh, that son or that daughter to sit mm -hmm. them down look them in the eye, and make sure that they have a relationship with the Lord. That is the most important thing. Uh, before mm -hmm. that child goes out of that house, pray for that child, and, and he ought to know that you're praying for that son or that daughter. And the, the utmost importance of all of this is uh, a relationship with the Lord. Um, you know, because too many times, you know, the parents were so busy. So there's so many things going on, mm -hmm. trying to stay on track of, of everything. It's more than a notion. It's more than a notion. So the very utmost important thing is to make sure or ensure that your yes. child has a relationship and a fellowship with the Lord, not only a relationship, uh, him being mm -hmm. Lord, God, Savior, but also spending some time in fellowship with him and so that he can get it straight first and and to Im impart that into that child or that son, that daughter, and, and to let them know that if anybody's going to lead, let it be them. And then right. after you get that straight, that's on a plane, and then uh, – and. And, and and tell them to minister Jesus, administer Jesus to their friend. Uh -huh. You see, because uh, a lot of times uh, parents only look at their sons and daughters. They don't ask questions. Mm -hmm. They don't want to get involved. Mm -hmm. They'd rather be friends instead of being a parent. And, and so I tell you, that's one of the worst things ever, trying to be hip with your friends. I, I remember uh, I have seen on occasion that uh, some, of, some of my friends had relationships with my friend's parents. I mean, it was as... Yeah, yeah, it was as, as hard and horrible as that. So... 
So first things first, making sure that that son or that daughter has a relationship and fellowship, a relationship and fellowship with the Lord, and directing that brother, that sister, that young person to the Lord, and, and then going from there. And then uh, in regards to their friends, you, you need to make them accountable. You need to make them accountable and make them um, Amen. Make, share who who are they with? What are their friends doing? Let them explain it to you. Uh, let them explain each individual. So if someone comes to the house, you need to know the story, the background. All right. You need to, you need to right. know what's That's going right. on with right. that individual who has the nerve or the desire to come into your house, your location. Yeah. So you, you just can't let yeah. and you can't just let anybody in your home. So so instructing your son, your daughter to go and administer the Lord to them. But again, the first things first, you gotta make sure that your son, your daughter is actually enjoying a relationship and fellowship with the Lord. And then their friends uh you wanna make sure that, that their friends are doing the same thing. Uh, because if they're not, then, you know, hey, uh, I, I know it's kind of tough out there. I mean, but you have to inspire them to be leaders. If anybody's going to be a leader, why not your son? Why not your daughter? And instruct them all of their days to to have a regimen time when they read the word and to grow and to develop and to become wise young people. Man, praise, man, God. Man, praise, man, God. So praise God. Praise hey, God. Praise mm. God. Praise God. Praise God. Doctor Martin. Yeah, Amen. Doctor Jerry Roy. Amen. The next man up. Amen. Take us into a song break, Doctor. After Amen. You give just a quick, um, somewhat of a synopsis on that very, very follow up on uh, Doctor Martin. Amen. Should we, Doctor Jerry Roy? Should we be quick to judge? A man when meeting the parents of a young teen or even quick to judge a man their reason why. A man, it's, it's kind of a tricky situation because yeah. they could be an influence. Mm -hmm. So take us into a song break on that as you explain us, my, uh, Dr. Jerry Roy. Should we be quick to judge our, you know, our daughters or even our sons, their friends for the most part? Yes, yes. Sometimes you just have to ask questions. You know, sometimes you just can't go out there and say, right. yeah. you know, you know, you heard that that's, that child is a, is a good student. They on the football team. They on the cheerleading mm -hmm. team. But you still need to find out some other things. You know, you, you want to know, are they left the home? left home for a long time are they on social media most of the time because some kids are naturally smart they don't have to study as much so you're not you can't just assume they're in a library or they're doing this so you do have to take an active part in your child's life and find out who their parents are and and, wh and what's the behavior that's going on in the home you know who's actually rearing that child at that time and I have a number of experiences right. just dealing with my 17 year old daughter and my 15 year old son. Now, I can't right. treat my 17 year old daughter the same way I treat my 15 year old son or my 33 year old son because my 33 year old son was very wise at a young age. I remember him, I'm saying, you know, why are you, you're, you're always down here by yourself playing video games? And I'm, do you want to go play with Tony mm -hmm. down the street? No, nah, dad, I don't want to play with Tony, like to cuss a lot and he hangs with the wrong crowd. I said, oh. Mm -hmm. Okay, so so his relationship with his friends were in the church. So he looked forward to Wednesdays and Sundays and hanging out with his mom and his siblings. Mm -hmm. So I had to, you know, so that was something I had to understand because I was used to having friends in the neighborhood, good or bad. They were still my friends. So uh, I appreciate mm -hmm. you guys being on this on this summit. Powerful, powerful oh, job no. you're doing, Pastor. So we're going to go into a song break on that note. And we're going to be listening to one, and this is by Ooh. Deacon Don Dada. And uh, matter of fact, we'll go right into one with uh, our Minister uh, um, Kent Osborne, if you guys don't mind. Okay, so just take a little water break. I go to the bathroom, oh, blah, blah, blah. 10 4. All right, here we go. <laughs> Seeds in the field. Praise is God, Doctor. Deacon Don Dada. This world is God's field. And we are his children and his seeds. Planted on good soil or bad soil from one's actions, ways, and deeds. Uh, we got seeds in the field with many dreams to fulfill. Too many seeds getting killed. Lord, we need your will to restore and rebuild. No more seeds getting killed. We got seeds in the field with many dreams to fulfill. Too many seeds getting killed. Lord, we need your will to restore and rebuild. No more seeds getting killed. 
I feed them God's word like Gerber babies, I burp them. Give them a verbal sermon, they learning, growing in purpose. Fully grown, it's on, and now they putting and working. Exercising, they teaching, they skilled in fighting off demons. In this battlefield, it's killer, be killer, and it's killing season. Brothers blasting heaters without even having good reason. Possessed by them demons, the reason the bullet squeezing. Facetious, bickering, fleeing the murder scene. In. He's leaking, dripping and covered in blood, he bleeding. He's wheezing, coughing up blood, asking for Jesus for forgiveness. For his sick, sadistic way of living Just in the midst of dying, he prayed this Lord, receive my soul, I'm about to get killed I understand I'm a seed in your field We got seeds in the field With many dreams to fulfill Too many seeds getting killed Lord, we need your will To restore and rebuild No more seeds getting killed We got seeds in the field With many dreams to fulfill Too many seeds getting killed Lord, we need your will To restore and rebuild No more seeds getting I'm killed I'm hotter than hot pockets with rockets going to Mars And I'm about to spar with Mayweather I'm way better, he just paid better Move the dough like future Talking too much, I mute ya I flip but no birds I'm strapped like Stephen Curry Government control Illuminati They controlling our minds Seem that all we could find is guns and knives Killing our husbands and wives Such a shame that being a black man in this day Mean that you win the gang or you win the cell being gay No way, that's not me, not I I don't get high, but I fly on the court in the field Built like steel, I will overcome any troubles in my life No strife, me and wife doing 80 in the night Laughing at all the haters, conversators Conversing, but they hurting, cause I'm doing with me, I stay flea, rockin' Fendi, Ferragamo, Gucci, Louis, got racks on top of racks, plaques on top of plaques, you swing, I'm swinging back, I'm young, gifted, and black, so as I attack, like I'm running out the backfield, I understand I'm a seed in the field, 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 who got dreams to fulfill, and on Jesus we build, cause he's the hand on the tip, now that's my seed in the field. Who had dreams to fulfill Still can't believe he was killed Lord, we need your will To restore and rebuild No more seeds getting killed I raise my son with purpose Be great on this earth's surface So great he correlated The name written and cursive Since birth I know he was the young king To bring order Like Martin Luther King had a dream Now he's a martyr Started for the Spartans in college A full scholarship Never would have thought he got hit Just home visiting Lord, forgive my urge to snap and go ballistic the devil want me back to my old ways of living But you saved me from them days and gave me a better vision So I'm charging all his peers to carry on his tradition And solemnly swear to be diligent, handle business But that I and yeah, we honoring, tremendous And marching every year, we repping you to the ending Remembering them times we shared, nothing could bear Just wishing you was here, in heaven we know you there Got a thousand million prayers for everybody who cared That knew you was a blessing on earth when you was here Even even though you gone, your legacy lives on. Long live, Dada, my seeds will live strong. Long live, Kiev, my seeds will live on. We got seeds in the field, with many dreams to fulfill. Too many seeds getting killed, Lord, we need your will. To restore and rebuild, no more seeds getting killed. We got seeds in the field, with many dreams to fulfill. Too many seeds getting killed, Lord, we need your will. To restore and rebuild. Seeds getting killed. Uh, if you don't know, you reap what you sow. What goes around, come back around for you. Plant good seed and good soil. You. Be loyal, your kids is watching you. Look up to your pops who's there for you. Plant good seed and good soil. You. And remember, Christ died for you. You are listening to Jerry Royce Live Worldwide Podcast. If God's been good to you, and he's brought you from a mighty long way, and you know for a fact, without a shadow of a doubt in your heart, that you never would have made it without him, you need to get God some praise. Get your praise. Uh-huh. Get your praise. That's right. Get from a mighty long way. Get your praise. Yeah. Get your praise. Yeah. Get your praise. That's right. I'm 
I wake up at night, the Lord for giving me breath. breath. If it wasn't for the grace of God, I never would have woke up by myself. Tell yeah. who really did the man that called that the rain didn't make the sun come out. That right. shine down on earth, giving us light, he's worth you talking about. Yeah. Ain't a man alive, turn water to wine, cast out a demon and cast them into the swine. My God is great, I don't care what you say, he's been good to me, don't you see my face? Big cool, they smiling, ain't never down, not as long as I got my guard around. You don't believe in God, who's at his only son, that for your sins and your life is done. Well, I'm rest in Christ, I'm not the knight, so when they come to a beast, I tell my life right. what God has done. Now he brought me out, the pits of hell, caught a jail cell, yeah. never to return, had an arm of sight, I'm in the bathroom. I'm fighting for my religion, I'm making not want no more Hitting you with these folks, going just where I've been, you don't want to go That's something God will make sure, right. he's too old and faithful Like them two little legs that you're walking That's on, walking and them on. arms you got, and them eyes you see I'ma praise them for eternity, I touch souls, save lives, best employer, Jesus Christ praise, uh-huh. praise, That's right. You know that I'm ready, I'm loving here, no clicks Kinda lift him up, he filling up a cup Looking at my problems like, what's up? No daddy got me, confidence turned up I believe in bliss, bliss, bliss. So I've never been looked left I know what my blessings are from, from, yeah, yeah I am just in the sun, sun, yeah, yeah so I try hard not to think about it Cause I know we got it Just lift my hands up high Give my praises to God, yeah You know what my blessings are from, from yeah, yeah I am just in the sun, sun, yeah, yeah So I try hard not to think about it Cause I know we got it Just lift my hands up high yeah. Give our praises to God, yeah Just you know Jesus, let me see you turn it off Get your hands in the air Why you there by the hands in the air? Get your hands in the air Praise God. Welcome back to this powerful summit. Amen. I'm your moderator for this powerful men summit. Next man up. Powerful selection by Deacon Don Dada. Amen. I'm a seed in the field. Plant your seeds on spiritual grounds. Amen. And Minister Ken Osborne, amen, gave us a powerful selection. Amen. Get your praise on. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Amen. We welcome everyone back, amen, to this powerful men's summit, amen, a vision, amen, that by Dr. Jerry Royce, amen, a powerful, powerful vision. If you're just tuning in, amen, to this powerful summit, amen, we're speaking on, amen, uh, the importance and the roles in our youth, our teenagers, our young men and women. We as parents have a special role to play, amen. Welcome back again. We're going to jump right back into this powerful summit, amen. Those some powerful songs. Y'all had the pastor rocking. Come on now. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. amen. Hallelujah. I want to go to our next man up on this on this panel, Minister Osborne. I want to talk a little bit about suspicious behavior. Connect with our listeners out there, sir. Amen. How to watch. We talked about this a little earlier in our segment for some who were just tuning in. I want to kind of go back to that. I want us to get a little deep in into this, amen, just a little uh, of your experience, Mr. Osborne, amen. Sometimes teens 
um, sometimes they're up to no good sometimes, or they have, or they sleep behind their parents' back, or sometimes they, you know, they, they, they're real sneaky, and you see these suspicious behaviors, and sometimes they even have a separate life. So this is very important to watch because now they have unfamiliar spirits that they are entertain, entertaining, and this is, this sometimes enter into the home. And y'all know where we're going, and we're going to this segment right now. Sometimes these spirits, they come back into your home, and they have an effect on their grades. Um, what are other effects, Mr. Osborne, that these behaviors may have on our families? And I know, my brother, from just listening to your videos, you can kind of share with us. About, take about a minute or two and connect with our audience on that. Okay, um, yes, yes, sir. All right, uh, what, it, uh, what it can have on your families are just say if your kids out there and they're getting into the wrong things. So, the, I know from there experience, you know, yeah, you can hear me, yes, sir. You, you own, doctor. Okay, all right, yeah, I know from experience for myself, you know, being a teen, I'm gonna just use my, my experience being a teen and you know, running away from my aunt's house, you know, because I lost my dad when I was five. And I lost my mom wow. when I was nine. You know, when I ended up having to go live with my aunt until I was 14 years old. And I didn't want to follow rules because, you know, at my aunt house, you know, we, we was being mistreated. It wasn't like, you know, being with my mom and my dad where you had that motherly love and they cared and they was going to show you support and things like that. See, my, my aunt, she had, she had several kids. So, and she never supported us, like came to the football games, basketball games, there was nothing like that. And the language that she, she used, the way she talked to us was very different from, from my mom and my dad. Yeah. So I started, you know, so I started rebellion. I started rebelling, you yeah. know, going out. Yeah, I started rebelling. I, you know, sneaking, um, leaving the house, sneaking away from the house. You know, even, even when I used to go to school when I was staying with her, I used to, you know, have a, a different set of clothes that I used to have with me when I leave her house. You know what I'm saying? To go put yeah. on when I, yeah, when I get to school, I go hang out with my friends because I didn't want to wear the clothes that she had us wearing, which was the hand-me-down clothes that she bought from the CITA, like other people's clothes. You know, and she was getting money. So a lot of that caused caused me to rebel um, against against my aunt. Wow. Wow, wow, that's powerful. Amen. Dr. Dr. Jerry Royce, jump on that, sir. Amen. Next man up. We're talking about these behaviors and even the attitudes. Y'all know back in the day, man, this, this panel's pretty much old school. Back in the day, you know, we, we, we dare not to roll our eyes. Or we even do all that, you know, that side, that <sighs> we we knew not to do that, amen. So so let's kind of mix this up, amen, and talk about attitudes of Batman. What are some of the sudden changes or or, or behaviors we know that as I was talking about, we know we got social media, but and, and sometimes our youth are isolated to this underground world and it's very important to pay a close attention to the sudden change of behavior in that aspect. Amen. Dr. Jerry, have you seen some of these behaviors? And if so, how, how do you pull a man? Let's just use our own children for us. How do you put them in text, sir? How do you get them back? A man, connect with our audience out there, sir. Dr. Jerry Royce. I'm back. Okay, so I have my mic down. <laughs> All right. Um, my okay, experience, Doc. I had this. Yeah, I heard you. I'm back. You can, can you hear me? Yes, sir. All right, cool. Um, yes, sir. I, I think the way to get them back, and, and this is just my experience. You know, of course, everybody got different experience with their children, their relationships. But when um, we yes, saw my, that my daughter was was sliding backwards a little right. bit because she had new friends. And, um, and but, you know, the thing that happened with us is that my wife and I, we tried to um, establish a really good uh, relationship with the children's parents, you know, um, and then you look at what they're doing for a living. And you, you, so you kind of assume that that they got control of what's co their children, you know, because of what they do. But then something you got to think about is like, wow, they have a very stressful job or a very demanding job. They may not be able to be in their child's life like you're assuming because they're in a leadership role. So assuming sometimes you can see your child could be slipping a little bit and, and, and because you just assuming that they okay when they leave your house, you know, you're like, you're just letting it go. And what I'm finding that 
Yes, sir. I had to build. I had to build an even closer bondage with my daughter than before, um, opening more dialogue. Because a lot of times when kids get in your car, they're listening to their radio, oh. their own music, their their social media, and there's no real dialogue going on. At times that you are spending with them. Yeah. So you kind of losing yes, her. You're losing her. You don't know who they're dealing with. On you know, you hear all the time how these these girls are leaving with these school teachers and going across the country. And the family was like thinking that she was going over there to tutor, and he was in her best interest. It's, it's like, wow. Do you have to go in and do an investigation? Do you have to hang out? You know, what, you know, it's just so much stress being a parent and i think i heard somebody say today matter of fact pastor jack said it today he said he's been a husband he's been a teacher but he said the hardest job he has right now is being a parent i said wow it is really hard it is really hard so uh thank you thank you doctor for giving me that uh the opportunity to speak yes sir Praise Amen. God. Praise God. Thank you, Gary. That, that's powerful there, sir. Amen. Our next man up on the panel, praise God. I want to take it back to the promoter. Amen. Uh, Brother Martin. Amen. This this brother has a deep spirit. Amen. I can feel something. Amen. In his spirit, sir. Uh, to our promoter. Amen. Brother Martin. Amen. In the family member, sir. Amen. And, and it sounds like that God is moving in your spirit. Amen. In the in a pastoral, I'm just speaking in this, this into existence. Hey, Amen. What are what are some of the? This is very important. Sometimes our, our teens get caught up, hey, Amen, with the wrong crowd. Hey, Amen. We know this has a poor influence on our youth yeah. around the world. Huh? Absolutely, and they seem to withdraw once they enjoy. Take 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 that, sir, and uh, connect with our audience. Hey, Amen. On. How, as Jerry said, how can we intercept that? Once we see it happening, that isolation, what are some of the other techniques? I like Jerry. Jerry's had a powerful technique. He, he said he interacted with his daughter. Amen. He had more dialogue. To connect with our listening audience, amen, on some of the more spiritual uh, tools, or even just what, however God leads you, and to bring in that child or that young man back to where he needs to be, sir. Because remember, we got those spirits have leashed now, so we know his prayer. Take it, doctor. Well, uh, amen, praise God. Well, one of the, th- the things that needs to be done, and matter of fact, it needs to be done daily, uh, again, praying over your child and making sure that they understand the value and importance of guarding their ear gates, guarding their eye gates, and guarding their heart. Uh, because, uh, it, because if we don't influence our children the way that they should go, the world is going to influence them. Uh, it's either us or the world it's quite simple and so as a result of us influencing our kids remember we should be preparing them to be leaders uh, leaders to go and to strengthen edify and to encourage others so we have to make sure that when they leave the house that they are prayed up that they are staged up and that they are ready to go. And matter of fact, that they have a ready word. And so, but let's just say that that hasn't happened at all. And, and you don't even know if your, your, your kid is saved. Well, first thing yes, first, look them in the eye and, and just take them by the hand and stress to them the value of God the importance yeah. of God and who he is because he's great, he's mighty, he's marvelous, he's magnificent. There is no other greater power source in heaven or on earth but him. And so they need to understand who God is. And then when they understand that, then they'll see everything else is, is second class, third class. So we, we need to instill in our children the value of who God is, that he's the greatest power source, in, in, in anywhere. And, and so, and, and that our children need to come alongside and be on his team because every other team is, is, uh, second, third, fourth, fifth place. So just strengthening, strengthening our kids before they even leave the house. And then when they get into the world, uh, the whole world is going mad. Stark, raven, mad. The enemy has unleashed everything he could unleash to steal, kill, and to destroy. Like Deacon Donald was talking about, the, the enemy, as a roaring lion, is out there seeking whom he can devour. 
So we need to, first things first, we need to make sure that our kids are strong in the Lord. They are mighty in the Lord, that they're valiant, and that they're vigilant, and that they have a ready word, because it's, either, it's us against them. And our source of strength and power is unmatchable. It cannot be matched. So we need to make mm-hmm. sure that our kids know that and understand that. And then go out and do good. Bless, bless, yes, bless sir. their friends. And, and again, just and Great. just saying that that has not happened. Well, first things first, just making sure that they know the Lord, and just Amen. help them to grow. Because sometimes the parents. I, I remember one time we gave a uh, we gave a a seminar, <laughs> and the seminar was this: that our kids will teach and instruct the parents, the kids would be on the panel, and then they would instruct or let the parents know what it is that they have to deal with and encounter on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. And so it it hurt my heart because uh, out of, uh, we had about 150 kids and only 30 parents came. And and we had uh, six girls and two boys, so the boys were kind of scared. But anyway, the girls would tell us that sometimes just to get outside their house, Uncle Nim touching them, Daddy Nim touching them, Brother Nim touching them, My just home. get out of the house. They had to literally fight to get out of their home. Mm-hmm. And, and so I had to make sure that they were strong in the Lord. And, and then the boys mm-hmm. talking about getting bullied and all of that. And I had to make sure that they were strong in the Lord. Uh, and then mm-hmm. the girls talking about the, 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 <laughs> the, the, you know, the, the, the transgender mm. thing is huge in schools yeah. these days. It's huge. And the media is making it, actually, they're making it larger than it actually is. They, they want to make sure that uh, we think that everybody is a part of that, which, of course, that is not true. Um, but, again, just making sure that our kids are straight and that their friends will have an ear to hear the word. If they don't have an ear to hear the word, then they need to move on. And I know everybody Amen. wants to be popular. I know everybody want to be the thing at the moment. But we have to make sure that they understand that God is the thing. Mm-hmm. Praise God. Amen. We talk about the promoter. So what I'm hearing, sir, is prayer is the key to this thing. Prayer, and as Jerry, Jerry said, amen, you, you got to get up close and personal with your children. I yeah. thank you for that, uh, promoter. That That's powerful, sir. Hey, man, you need to go ahead and start on that book, sir. The God, God is moving in you. Amen. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Amen. 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 I know you're right. I know you're right. Matter of fact, uh, I just uh, was talking about that just uh, two days ago. So that wow. is a word in season for me. Thank you <laughs> for the kind of powerful, powerful spirit. Yes, sir. Amen. We're going to be looking for that book. Is coming out, sir. Amen. We have on our panel also. We want, I want to go back to Deacon Don. Uh, Dada, he was talking about that spiritual seed, my brother, amen, on this next man up sum, uh, summit, if y'all just tuning in to this powerful summit, amen. Uh, Deacon Dada, uh, Dada, he was speaking about that spiritual seed, amen, uh, and you are you are a firm believer, amen, that you are your brother's keeper, amen. What would be our reason, what would be a reason why some of, and I was listening to that song deeply, amen, that spiritual seed, amen, sometimes those, those seeds, Watch where we're going with this, my brother, amen. They fall on grounds, amen, that weeds get entangled, amen, into that into that seed. Those weeds get entangled. And sometimes we want to step in there and try to untangle those weeds. Y'all know where we're going with this. What would be a reason why some of our youth, which as the promoter said, Brother Martin, amen, prayer is essential. So what would be some of, uh, what would be, a reason why some of our youth starts to, as the, as the youth say, diss it, their old friends. Hey, man, now you know, you, you see what we're saying because now they're caught up. So what would be a reason, hey, man, they, they suddenly start dissing their old positive friends? Key word positive. Hey, man, run with that, my brother. Next man up. Oh, man. Um, I couldn't have said it better uh, myself, <laughs> man. This, this is deep. This is start deep. Um, old Start dissing the old friends, the positive friends. Um, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Th- those That's are those right. weeds. That those those weeds that's trying to get you entangled and trap you up. That's which you. is which is the world. Um, like he said, how social media uh, uh, promotes uh, uh, transgender. It promotes uh, negativity. You know, it it promotes all the stuff 
that get our kids trapped up and encapsulated in the wrong direction. So like um, the promoter said, Brother Martin, that when the kids don't have an ear to listen to the word of God or to receive God, you know, in, in a conversation, that's a key signal and a warning sign that th those kids are being uh, a, a numb to positivity um, and they want to yeah. adhere to the wrong thing to do, you know, and that's a mm -hmm. strong indicator that their signals are being crossed with the influence of society and what is, is, is impressing upon them. So we have to impress upon them God. We have to impress upon them positivity and to keep yeah. reinforcing that and pray pray for them and to let them know the importance of God and that he is the one that's going to get you out of those situations or to give you the wisdom to avoid those situations and to protect you going through, even if you are in those situations, um, to not be so encapsulated by the world and society and its influences because it's the trap of the enemy and to give them that wisdom so they can have the understanding and see that the setup when it comes, that's what the spiritual seed you have to plant the seeds of wisdom in our youth so that they can understand how to navigate through the traps of society and that is designed for them to stumble and to fumble and to fall into wow. a, a, a depression state, into a, a non-caring attitude. These are the traits that you look for, look for in the youth when they're about to go into that wrong uh, a path or that direction. You know, and you, you don't know what they're going through. Um, you know, like these, um, you know, um, Brother Jerry said, getting out of the house g through their family. Yeah. They got struggles with their brothers, their uncles, and you know, you know, the, that favorite uncle is, you know, once comes sit on my lap, or you know, it, it's any. You, you never know uh, the, the the depression that these kids are going through. So you would have to open up a dialogue. You want to ask questions. You want to see where their mindset is at and try to reinforce uh, uh, the strength in them in order for them yep. to maneuver in society. And it's so important to have that dialogue. Yep. The dialogue is what's missing. We have to be able to communicate mm -hmm. and know how to communicate with our youth and, and hear them out as well. Hear them out as well, yes. but let them know how important it is for them to know God and Very to believe important. in him and mm -hmm. to follow his instructions and will for their life, which is more precious than silver and gold, more precious than what yes. your friends are telling you to just come to the skating ring and we're going to hang out and, and, and do this and that and mm -hmm. the third, and, which is good, but you got to be careful of what entails in those events, yes. in those settings that these kids are in. And it's an everyday struggle um, trying to make sure that they're protected. And it takes a village, you know, to raise a, a, a child. So that takes that teacher. It takes that, you know, the football coach. It takes that um, community leader as well, you know, the principal, you know, your, your, your cousins, yeah. your uncles. It takes everybody to have an impression on their life and to keep them around um, positive people that in, impart um, positivity into them. So it's important that we do that with our youth. And what I try to do is to keep the kids, um, you know, occupied, keep them active yes, into doing something because they got so much energy. And if they're not involved in a, in a, a group setting of something positive, so you, see, I, I kind of use sports, you know, get mm -hmm. them in the, on the basketball team or the football team or something that they can utilize their energy. So at the end of the day, when they come from, um, practice or whatever the case may be, or, you know, they're tired, they're exhausted, you know, they don't want to go outside, they, you know, uh, you put them in training, and they do double sessions, and they have no energy to do nothing else afterwards, but they usually, they, they got the energy off, their frustration has to be let off in a manner, and, you know, that's why we use the form of praying, you know, to get that um, energy going and flowing, and to get it out so that, you know, we don't burst with all, you know, that's going on in the world. So it's important for us to impress upon that, keep the kids involved in something positive, keep ministering them every day, dialogue with them, because if we don't 
protect our youth and communicate with them, you know, to bombard them with our love, with our wisdom. We're protecting them because if we don't do that, society is going to impress upon them their views and, you know, what the media is doing with our society as far as the influence with the news and everything that's going on in this world is is, is in a shambles. Um, You got 80% of the news is negativity. The other 20% yes, is the weather. <laughs> you know, Amen. they don't promote um, um, Jerry Walk, the old lady across the street, you know, three mm-hmm. times this day. They don't promote that. They want to promote, you know, what's negative, but that's society, and um, they got to be mindful of it and understand that's the tool of the enemy. So we got to impress Thank upon you, our man. children every day to pray with them, to communicate with them, and know if they got an ear for the Lord. That's important. If Thank they you. don't have the ear for the Lord, then we see them going in that direction. They got an ear for something else. They got an ear. They're going to hear something. But what are they listening to? Amen. Absolutely. That's those other weeds that you were speaking about. That's powerful. Sir, hey, Dr. Jerry was our CEO, amen, and founder, amen, of this powerful network, Positive Power, amen, 21.org, amen, the visionary, Dr. Jerry Royce, amen. Thank you, uh, Dr. Hey, uh, Donna. Thank you, sir. Thank, that was powerful. Now, I, I like that, sir. Praise God. And you, you, you tagged right off from your promoter, amen. Uh, Dr. Jerry Royce, amen. amen. Again, thank you for this vision, for putting this powerful song together, Next Man Up. Amen. Sometimes like, when you may lose a friend, sir, or even a family member, amen. And having said what Deacon uh, Don Dada has just said, amen, y'all see why this is flowing. It flows right into these important dialogues. If you're just tuning in, amen, to this powerful summit, amen, we're speaking on the importance of getting involved with our youth, having a conversation, amen, with uh, Positive Power, amen, 21.org, Dr. Jerry Royce. Sir, sometimes our youth may lose a friend or family member. How do you help that child understand what's going on or help them through the process of this difficult process, sir, amen, or even just a family member? And we're going we're gonna, to uh, follow up with Mr. Ken Osborne on that one as well. Praise God. Dr. Jerry, take it away, sir. Well, when, um, I never lost anybody really close as a, as a youngster, mm-hmm. but as an adult. As you know, as you start getting in your forties and your fifties, you're going to be losing some dear friends. I lost two best friends and a cousin that was a childhood friend just in the last three years to diabetes. And of course, you know that's what uh, you know um, promoted me to want to produce that film, the documentary about the movie. But um, for me, trying to get over my cousin's death because he's been in my life all all these years, it seemed like it's just you need time. But you do need support, you, mm-hmm. need, you know, because you're not operating on all cylinders because your mind is still trying to figure out, you know, what happened? Why did God take that that good person, you know, that person you you knew? And um, and I think with children, I don't know, I think sometimes they're a little used to death, seem like it, mm-hmm. you know, I'm. You know, like I said, I have yes, never lost yes, nobody really young, and and I listen to my kids sometimes. They say, "Oh, because because just in the last uh, school year for my son, uh, t- two boys that That's he knew we were did. killed. Right there. Yeah, one boy was killed on the street. Mm. He was just going home, and he ran into a guy. He had mm. ran into an altercation, and uh, they got in a fight, and got stabbed, and killed. And, and of course, the school really wow. reacted to that. Sent letters home to the parents. So I did talk to him about it. And it, it didn't really, it didn't bother okay. him from what I could see. We talked about it. He said, yeah, he was in one of my classes. The other kid, if you remember, another death that happened. Okay. So these, I don't know, because of the video games, the, this is over, I don't know, you know, why they ain't able to handle it. But maybe because he wasn't his best friend now. He has some really, really good friends that he'd been friends with elementary. Yes, sir. I'm not sure how he would feel if he lost one of those guys because he's really close because they communicate every day. Uh, not just on social media, but they play stuff. video games and they communicate. You know, it's just like your, your friend being right there with you. And one of his friends actually come home yes, a couple of days a week here and wait for his mom to pick him up. So I don't really know how would he react if he lost one of those three guys because they've been this like they like brothers. Wow. Now I know I tell you this. Now he had a pet. Come on, Jerry. I know this. You know this wasn't a dog. He had a pet rabbit that he grew really fond of. <laughs> And he lost that pet 
uh, about two years ago. He took that mm-hmm. really hard. And then we had a little ceremony outside in our backyard when we buried the, the bunny. And one of the things he said, he said he wasn't just a pet. He was like my brother because he didn't because he, he just has a sister. His older brother doesn't live here. So he said it was like his brother, you know, he's, he, you know, and it hurt him, you know, mm-hmm. and I was like, wow. And, um, you know, so I, I'm thinking that if that did happen to one of his friends, we probably get that same experience. Just thinking back to what happened there. Yes. So, uh, yeah. Yes, sir. Thank, Praise thank God. You. Thank, thank you, you, Dr. Doctor. Jerry. Amen. Doctor, a producer. What, what's our time, sir? We ready for a song break, sir? Yeah, yeah. We got 15 minutes. We're going to be closing out at 1130. So uh, we got time. We got we got uh, Ken Osborne, uh, one of my favorite songs. He Hallelujah. Has, uh, called, this one is called Soar. I, I, I think I grabbed All the right. wrong one. I'm not sure if I grabbed the wrong one. But let's go ahead and play and we'll see. All right, here we go. Praise I'm, God. I'm assuming this is Ken Osborne. Right. Forgive me if it's not, Kent. Here we go. All right. <laughs> <laughs>
Thank you all for tuning back with us on this powerful, powerful segment of Next Man Up. Amen. A powerful vision by Dr. Jerry Royce. We thank our listening audience. Most important, we thank this panel, amen, on this Next Man Up Summit to help teach, educate, empower, mentor, play for, spiritually lead our young men and women around the world. Amen. And to remind them, we are our brother's keepers. Amen. I'm going to uh, wait on our producer to allow me to get these pa- these uh, final thoughts. We're not going to go into that yet. I want to get this back to our producer so we can give uh, each one of our panelists, amen, just an opportunity uh, to share how uh, the listening audience can you know, get some of their product. I definitely want these CDs, amen, and uh, the books or whatever they have to promote, amen. Dr. Jerry Royce, before we go to our final thoughts. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right, yeah, we're going to give everybody yes, an opportunity to um, uh, let everybody know where they can find them on on social media, their website. So uh, I'm going to go down the road. So uh, a promoter, uh, Mr. Martin, you can go first, sir. Uh, well, praise God. Uh, Curtis Barry Martin, uh, that's my email address. No, 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 no. That is my Facebook page, Curtis Barry Martin. Uh, I have another one, C. Barry Martin, but that's a negative at the moment. Um, my Also, for artists and friends, the Orchard Promotional Firm page, the Orchard promotional firm page and you know and one of the things that was made mention of earlier too is spirits i mean the the spirits of evil have been launched Come on. they are aiming straight for our children and so as adults elders leaders we must protect them with the word of god that's what's going to protect them and lead them and guide them and and i suggest everybody who is listening to this work out your own salvation with fear and trembling make sure that you you're not a castaway that you are upfront and personal with the lord god almighty so you know it's it's us for it's up to us to teach, train, and edify our children. Uh, and Deacon Don Dada, he's been going about uh, the land, the land, and literally, uh, well, I'll let him share that, but I, I'm just marveling at what the Lord has allowed him to do and position him for in such a time as this to strengthen and to edify and encourage those who are hurt. So the Orchard Promotional Firm, uh, my my Facebook page is Curtis Barry Martin. Uh, and what a privilege Amen. it is to be amongst men of God. What a privilege, I must Amen. say. Amen. All right. Thank you, Brother thank Martin. Thank you, sir. Um, I really appreciate it. I'm going to tell you, uh, after listening to uh, uh, Deacon Dada's story on the show on Positive Power, that really motivated me, motivated me to really wanted to do this thing, especially since my morning, my Saturday morning became available when I talked to Dr. Paul Kelly. He was all on board. So I appreciate you, uh, Brother brother Martin, for uh, introducing us to uh, Deacon Dada and to take this, this platform to where it needs to be and that's to uh, give men a chance hey, to speak. Man. That's right. Next man up. All Hallelujah. Right. That's right. All right. Next <laughs> man up is uh, Deacon Dada. Tell us where people can find uh, us. Thank, <laughs> yeah, thank you, Brother Jerry. Um, uh, when you invited me, you know, to this uh, platform, I was like, oh, man, you know, uh, next man up. I text you back. I'm like, next man up. Got my name written all over it, <laughs> um, you know, because this is, you know, one call. I'm like, oh, you know, because you have to, you know, be in tune with the spirit. When it calls, you got to be ready to answer. And I thank you for that call, man, because um, that's what God has called me to do through the um 
trials and tribulations that I'm going through. But um, my love and not hate movement. Um, if they want to follow the love and not hate movement, they can go to my website and follow me. That's deacondon.com. As deacon, as in the church, spelled the same way. Don is D O N, and Dada is D Y D Y. You know, everybody think it's D A, but I spell it. Deacon Don D Y D Y as Dada Deacon Don Dada. Um, also, um, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter is the same. Deacon Don Dada on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. That's um, with the D Y D Y. Um, the album is called Spiritual Ammo. Like um, uh, Brother Martin said, you know, um, we all over the you know the land. Uh, traveling yes, and doing interviews um, and promoting awareness uh, with this album is the ministry, uh, Spiritual Ammo, to give the youth um, the tools that they need to fight these spiritual uh, uh, um, evils out there in society, yes. what's going on. So I give them the ammunition with Spiritual Ammo, and they can download it, stream it. It's on all major music sites, Spotify, um, iTunes, Apple Music, um, just punching spiritual ammo or my name, Deacon Dundada. Um, but it's important for us to get this message out to the youth and the community because, like, you know, the devil is seeking whom he may devour and he's targeting our youth. Yes. Um, yes. Like, I, you know, we, we all know what I'm going through with the tragedy of my lost son and my, my nephew. And there's so many people out there that's going through the same thing. Um, you know, that I'm going through. And if I could prevent one, I did a just cause as far as the will of God and, and being his uh, um, um, vessel to use me because that's, you know, what I'm here to do because anything, if I do anything under my own power from here on out, it's not going to be the right thing. Um, as far as my old mentality growing up in the streets, want retaliation and, and uh, uh, um, you know, from what transpired, that's the natural um, reaction as far as the world is concerned. But God has a greater calling for me. And, you know, I cherish that too heart. And I'm getting so many calls from people that's going through the same thing that I'm going through. And I'm like, whoa, wait a minute. I'm, I'm going through what I'm going through. I, and I'm hearing your problems on top of mine. But glory to God, if he's using for me that reason, because you have to be able to reciprocate the energy and to um, relinquish some of that negative negative energy and get that support. So yes. for those that's going through what I'm going through, I pray for their strength. I pray for their sanity. Um, I pray that they have a strong support system because you need support um, because you never be the same. It's a traumatic moment. Um, so that's how detrimental this message is. And I put it all in my music, spiritual ammo, get the CD, follow the love and I hate movement. And we got to protect our youth out there, you know, um, for everything, the seeds in the field, that's the single, and we have to plant good seeds on good ground because we have to impress upon our youth the direction that they need to go because if we don't, the world will impress on them a whole different direction, and that's what's going on. And we got to protect our seeds because the seeds are our future, and our future is dying every day and getting killed out here in these streets because they don't have the ammunition in the spiritual realm in order to fight off these influences, which is the work of the enemy out there. Um, so we got to stay prayed up, stay impressing upon them, and be active in their lives and give them examples in order to follow. Yeah. And with my testimony in my life, I try to give them examples that I too was once you and could have been going that same direction. The Lord saved my life because I got locked up in jail, life-threatening situations. Everything that you're going to... Um, uh, witness in the future if you don't change your life and follow a better path and God has a greater calling for your life which is the purpose that you are here on this earth tap into your real purpose in life which is the will of God that he has for your life and you have ammunition and you have tools use them for good and you will be successful in this society and you still have to be mindful of your surroundings being successful because the enemy still going to try to take you down with peers and things around you to be diligent and to be vigilant in the world and society and it's so important because life is precious and life is not promised tomorrow to be on top of your P's and Q's out there in society and I love this broadcast I love you know the whole next man up I'm here with you guys I got your support I got your love just call me one phone call away because it's so important 
that we get to these Thanks, youth God. and save our youth because that is our future. Mm -hmm. So follow me, Spiritual Ammo, on all major music sites. Deacon Dun Dada is my, my um, dot com is my website. That's Dada with D Y yeah. D Y. And um, Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter, and I love you guys. And, uh, you know, they're so passionate for me. I could keep going, but I'm going to pass it on to the next person because as long as we plant the seed, then we can watch it water and grow. Like the word is you plant the seed, but God allows it to grow. So we're planting the seed right now. You know, so seeds in the field, I want to plant that in their hearts and their mind to go get the single seeds in the field as well because it can bless you, it can save lives, and it can minister to all that hear it. Amen. Amen. Oh, Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Amen. All right. And I guess the Amen. next man up would be my good friend, Minister Kent Osborne. Next man up. Yeah, yeah, like um, like the man, of, like the man of God was just saying, you know, we definitely got to be, you know, be there for our kids and and be that covering and teach them the word of God, you know, and and be that be that mentor, be that mentor, because like he said, if, if if we don't be there, you know, the streets will definitely show them, and the streets will definitely raise them. And I I take my my personal testimony of 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 um seeing what was going on in the streets, seeing how the people in the streets, you know, was, was getting money and, you know, they had the nice clothes and they seemed like they had everything. So my mind got trapped inside a mental prison thinking that, you know, the way that they was getting money and the way they was living was the right way of living, the right way to do it, you know, and I got trapped. I didn't have nobody to teach me and show me the right way of how to do things, you know, that you didn't have to go out here and sell dope and to make money to buy this. You stay in school and get your education and trust God and believe in God. You know, and, and, and you got to have that spiritual covering and somebody around you to show you that. Because if you don't, the streets will show you, you know, getting out with the wrong crowd and everything. So I just wanted to, I just wanted to run that and just say that, you know, that was a good thing with the man of God just said. And that's very important. That's very important to be good mentors to your kids and show them the right way. The way you can, the way you can find my music, you can go to www.kentosborne.com. You can also go to prisontopower.org, which is the nonprofit that we we just starting. You know, we just getting ready, we just starting it, so we plan on opening up yes, open up yeah. mentor mentorship programs that we plan on doing after school, where we're doing tutoring after school. So it's it's just starting. So you can go to prisontopower.org. You can reach me on Facebook www.facebook.com/slash Ken Osborne35. You can reach me on Twitter, and you can reach me on Instagram. Hey, hey, Ken, hey, you said, Ken, did you say prisontopower.org? Yes, prisontopower.org. Okay. All right, I'm putting that on the on the page hey, so hey. people coming back and check it out. Hey, Amen. All uh, right. Um, All right, Pastor, you're going you to close this out, Pastor. Before you close this out, Pastor, I just want to say, gentlemen, Great. thank yeah. you. Thank you so much for help, helping us with this debut show. You know, there won't probably be another yes, show sir. like this one, but this is basically the format uh, that the, the spirit has uh, has guided uh, uh, Pastor and I, so we really appreciate you three guys taking time out of your schedule and and to minister to the world. Because uh, like I told you guys before, um, when it comes to broadcasting, man, Batman don't play. Um, I'm in this thing, you know, and and I have children, you know, three kids, and it's a, it's a major concern Amen. in the community, you know. So uh, thank you so yes, much sir. for being part of this uh, platform. Amen. All right, Pastor. Amen. Amen. Yes, man. All right, Pastor. Thank you. Thank you for your vision, Doctor. Amen. And also, we want to thank each and every one of these powerful spiritual leaders. Amen. There's a, a best selling book out there, my brothers and listening audience. Amen. Uh, by the author, Dr. Paul Kelly. Amen. It reached Amazon's top 100 page. Amen. All through this month. Amen. And that book, it. It speaks of just what the promoter, Brian Martin, was speaking about, Mr. Martin, each and every one of you gentlemen, amen, how we should pray. Amen. But that book, amen, has landed in the hands of icons such as Dr. Jesse Jackson. He is in that book, amen. I had an honor of meeting him back in 2005, amen, at a National Baptist Cat Convention and also appeared on BET on, a, uh, on one of their – uh, news interviews speaking of infrastructure, uh, the the importance of interest, infrastructure in the inter cities. Mm. Uh, I highly recommend you all to get that book. We teach it on this very network uh, nationwide, and we're also going to be uh, starting a uh, nationwide 
online Bible, amen, uh, teaching Bible online, or more or less, more or less of a uh, international Bible class online, amen, with Pastor's Time Ministry. So I encourage you to go get Pastor's Time, turn your trials into victory. It speaks on how to discern all those spirits. Many people have been through trials. Mm -hmm. Many people have been through, amen, their storms. But we have to be able to identify those storms. We have to be able to identify those trials. Can somebody say amen? Amen. Amen. amen? We have to be able to understand what the trials look like. They come in different angles. They come in different shapes. They come in narcissistics. They come in uh, abusive behaviors. Amen. So once we identify, amen, these trials, maybe every trial is there to is there to strengthen you. Every trial is there, amen, to uh, remind us of where we come from. So I want to close this segment, and once again, we thank the visionary, Dr. Jerry Royce, for this powerful vision. I want to remind the youth, amen, on a powerful, powerful, powerful message that Dr. King once said, amen, in 1967, what is your blueprint? What is your blueprint? That's what Dr. King basically said six months before he was assassinated. King spoke to a group of students at Barrett Junior High School in Philadelphia on October, amen, the 26th, 1967. Amen. Uh, this was about six months before he was assassinated. Amen. And I asked the listening audience to just listen to this, amen. Amen. King stood before these students and he said, I want to ask you a question. And that is, what is your life blueprint? Now, each of you is in the process of building the structure of your lives. And the question is whether you have a proper, a solid, and a sound blueprint. Dr. King went on to say, I want to suggest some of these things that should be in your life's blueprint. Number one is your life blueprint should be a deep belief in your own dignity, your worth, and your own somebodiness. Don't allow anybody to make you feel that you're nobody, Dr. King said. Always feel that you count. Always feel that you have worth. Always feel that your life has ultimate significance. Secondly, in your life blueprint, you must have as the basic principle, amen, the determination to achieve excellence in your various fields of endeavor. You're going to be deciding as the days, amen, and as the years unfold, what you would do in life, young folk, what your life works would be. And Dr. King went on to say, set out to do it well. And he said, I say to you, my young friends, doors are opening to you, doors of opportunities that were not open to your mothers and your fathers. And the great challenge of facing you is to be ready to face those doors as they open. Amen. In other words, King was saying trials are going to come, but go on anyway. He said, and when you discover what you will be in life, set out to do it as if God Almighty called you at this particular moment in history to do it. Don't just set out to do a good job. Set out to do it such a good job that the living, the dead, or the unborn couldn't do it any better. If it falls in your lot to be a street sweeper, Sweep the streets like Michelangelo painted pictures. Sweep the streets like Beethoven composed music. Sweep the streets like Leon Chong Price sings before the Metropolitan Opera. King went on to say, sweep the streets like Shakespeare wrote poetry. Sweep the streets so well that all the hosts of heavens and the earth will have to pause and say, here live a great street sweeper who swept his job well. If you can't be a pine at the top of the hill, King said, be a shrub in the valley. Be the best little shrub on the side of the hill. Be a bush if you can't be a trail. Amen. If you can't be a highway, King said, just be a trail. If you can't be the sun, be a star. For it isn't by the size that you win or fail. Be the best. At whatever you are, amen. Ladies and gentlemen, listen, audience. We thank every one of you all for listening, amen, to this powerful broadcast. We thank, amen, 
our powerful, powerful platform. And thank you for Dr. Jerry Royce. Amen. And thank each and every one of you for tuning in. Amen. I'm going to ask Dr. Jerry Royce to just close us out in a prayer on this powerful platform. Thank you, listening audience. Amen. Amen. We all need to be lifted up and encouraged at all times. The Bible is a great source for encouragement. The Bible is the living word of God. It feeds us through the promises of God. Found in scripture. You guys hear me read Philippians 4, 4, 7 all the time. And I'm going to close out on scripture. Philippians 4, 4, 7 reads, Always be full of joy in the Lord. I say it again. Rejoice and let everyone see that you are unselfish and considered in all you do. Remember the Lord is coming soon. Don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God your needs and don't forget to thank him for his answers. You do this, you will experience God's peace, which is far, far more wonderful than the human mind can understand. His peace. And the peace of God which surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and your minds in Jesus Christ. I pray. Amen. May the house say amen. 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 All right. Oh, Thank man. you, gentlemen. Yeah. Thank you, Dr. Paul Kelly, oh, Minister okay. Kent Osborne, Minister Curtis Martin, and Deacon Don Dada. We appreciate you guys. We love you guys. And don't forget, share this file. We'll be back every Saturday at 10 o'clock starring Dr. Paul Kelly and me, a.k.a. Batman of Charm City, Joy Woods Live Worldwide. Thank you, everybody. Hi, I'm Larry W. Robinson, host of Gospel Updates, your gospel entertainment news report. And you're listening to Positive Power 21 Christian Radio with Jerry Royce, live worldwide. Gospel recording artist Teresa Powell, and I would like to take this time to say congratulations for four years of exceptional radio broadcasting to Positive Power 21 Christian Media and Jerry Royce Live Worldwide Ministries. Hi, this is recording artist Reggie Campbell saying congratulations on four years of radio to Positive Power 21 Christian Media with Jerry Royce Live Worldwide Ministries. Can you feel the power? Hey there, Shavay Price. And I want to congratulate my friend, Jerry Royce, a.k.a. Batman, for four years of being on the radio to Positive Power, XXI, Christian Media, and Worldwide Ministries. Congratulations, Jerry. And I pray 40 more years of success for you. Can you feel the power? Can you feel the power? I can feel the power. God bless you. Can you feel the power? Can you feel the power? Feel the power of Double X. Positive Power 21.org Internet Radio You are listening to Jerry Royce Live Worldwide Podcast.